Hello, hello. All right, I am going to walk us through a uh, how to use a HarperDB Next.js component um, to build a Next.js application on HarperDB. To get started, we're going to use the HarperDB Create Component um, CLI tool. This will prompt you with which kind of component you'd like to create. We'll make sure to select Next.js application component. We're going to name this just test app. And then we're just going to give it a minute. It's going to install some dependencies. While it's doing so, I'm going to walk us through what kind of comes with the next the HarperDB Next.js component. So first and foremost, uh, it's necessary to add it to your HarperDB config and just point it at your application directory. Um, so if you are uh, if you have any kind of like um, weird or different um, uh, app repo set up, you might need to change this file path. Otherwise, the root should do just fine. Um, and then you can point, uh, you can run that application directory with HarperDB, and it should work just fine. Um, the alternative way to do this is by using the included CLI tool. This CLI tool um, is meant to kind of replace Next.js itself. It's what our example will use underneath the hood. Um, and that is what it will, this will launch HarperDB um, and create some sensible configuration for, uh, values for you. Now that we're done on the dependencies, let's just run, um, let's just open up this application. And so I'll show you what I mean by that. So the config here has our component already um, in use. And this just points at the root of our thing because what it'll look for is it'll look for um, like a Next.js config, it'll, inval it'll validate your package JSON and um, it doesn't really, it's not really concerned with where the source of your application is, but really where your build output is, which is luckily something that is pretty uniform in Next.js applications. So with that, um, looking at the package JSON next, you'll see that we've replaced the dev build and start commands with that CLI tool I mentioned. This CLI tool is what will kind of let us um, run HarperDB as we launch our application. So we'll get that started here. Um, actually, we'll do it in the terminal above, so it's a separate process. So we're gonna see the into test app as well. And now from here, we'll do npm run dev, which will map to this command here. As we're running, you'll see that the .next directory gets generated automatically. And if we navigate to localhost 3000, we'll see that our app automatically compiles its web server. If we navigate into our app directory and go to the page, let's say we want to look at the second dog instead of the first one. So we'll go the second and we'll replace zero with one and we'll save. You'll notice that on the right hand side, the page is automatically updated. Oh, it looks like we got to do that one here too. And you can see that it automatically updates live. So this is a fully connected development server. So you'll have a full um, developer experience as you're going here. But let's not stop there. Let's kind of dig into how this all works. So you'll notice that in this very basic page, um, it's a server side rendered component and it's calling this um, server action called list dogs. So let's go check that out. List dogs, this is in your actions.js file. This is a Next.js server action. It is using the HarperDB globals, such as tables, and it's just doing what you would do in any kind of resource file. In fact, we actually have a resources.js file here, which is doing um, sort of some data seeding for us. This kind of just pre-fills the database on startup with some data. And you can see that it's also using those HarperDB, G HarperDB globals. When you import HarperDB, in any kind of the server side code on your Next.js application, you'll have full access to those. And there are then and with that, this function can now be called from anywhere in your Next.js application, um, and it will work as expected. Even if you were to create a client component, you can still leverage um, server side uh, server side uh, actions. So let's do that example. Let's create a client component. And we are going to first start with the directive, use client. And then we're going to import, use effects, and use state from React. 
we're going to import our action. And then we're going to export a default function client component. Inside of here, we're going to create a, oh, we can actually, this is perfect. <laughs> we will do, ooh, where did it go? I wanted all of that. Um, come back. Perfect. So we will create a state variable for our dogs list. And then we are going to use the use effect um, API method to create, to do our async list dogs dot then. And I prefer not doing an implicit thing here. So we're going to pass that return through to the setter. Um, but that shorthand was fine. And then in this client component, let's just do, let's make this a little bit simpler. Let's just call it P tag. And we're going to say, you know, I am a client component. Uh, there are, and what we do is strong, and we'll do dogs.length. There are X number of dogs in the table. We'll save. We'll go back over to the page. And in here, let's add our client component. We'll save. And we'll notice that as things re-render, client component is filled and it's able to access that server action. Awesome. Let's take this a step further and let's continue building out this application. Let's say we want to view individual pages for all of the dogs. So let's create a dogs folder with a ID folder inside of it. And then we're going to create a new file within there called page.js. From here, um, if you're not aware of this, this syntax is the file system router. So we're creating essentially a new endpoint called dogs with a parameter of ID. So we can get access to that by doing export default async function page. Inside of here, we can destructure the params and then we can return for now. Let's just start with this section. And we're going to do H1 and we're probably want to, going to have, we're going to ideally create a dog variable. So let's uh, start with that up top. So just const dog equals null for now. And then we're going to do down here, we'll do a P tag and we'll say breed and it will be, you know, dog dot get breed um, as well as a P tag. And we're just going to put the word woof in for a little more content. I did, and that, so now to kind of pull all this together, there's going to be exactly like this is showing us. So we're going to need to do some form of like uh, of a wait call. So we actually are going to simplify this dog equals, and it's going to be something like this, where let's just say get dog. And we're going to pass in the params.id to this function. And we're going to define that in our actions. So in our actions file, let's go to export async function get dog id and then we are going to return tables.dog.get id inside of the page that we just created we can now import that get dog from oh uh, what did i break actions i think oh sorry we need to do is that the same as this one yeah actions actions great Double check, it's the right name, get dog, get dog, get dog, get dog, cool. So with all of that, now that that's all connected, we can go back to our app, we do forward slash dogs, forward slash zero. Oh, module not found, can't resolve actions. Oh, it's just a missing path, that's my bad. We need to do up, up, and up, okay. Dogs is not defined. That's fine. There's some, some live coding for you. <laughs> there we go. So now after we fix some of those um, user mistakes, you'll see that we are now calling get dog from the this page and it's being rendered dynamically. That's pretty awesome. We can add, you know, another wolf in here and see it live reload. We can also go to the next dog. We can do just put in one or 10 for Bailey. Um, I think we have... You know, put number five is Cooper. Awesome. So let's um, shut this server down real quick. So I want to demonstrate uh, one another piece here. 
Let's now run the build command and let's see what Next.js generates as our production build. You see there's about four static pages. And once the build traces are complete, we should have a good idea of what's going on. So we have our root page, we have the uh, default not found, and then we have a dynamic page, which we just demonstrated, which is a forward slash dogs forward slash ID. Let's make this dynamic page um, statically rendered. So this is more of a Next.js feature than it is anything, but I'm just demonstrating how versatile connecting the HarperDB can, can be for your Next.js application. So let's do, we need to use the generate static params. And then we need to do the, we need to get the list of dogs from the, the list dogs function. And then all we need to do is return. Um, we can simplify this down to just dog that ID, I think. Or actually, you know what? We can do this. We only we just have to return dogs as it is because each of these dogs objects has an ID property, which will kind of get duct typed into this params object, which is exactly what we want. So with this function here, let's run the build command one more time. And we have another error. List dogs is not fine. I am on a roll today with this demo. Add list dogs to the import statement. Try one more time. And now we should see that there are 16 static pages being created instead of four, thus demonstrating that this generate static params is returning the uh, all of the dogs. And now you can see here in our paths, rather than this being dynamic, instead it has pre-built all of these routes with all of these dogs. So all in all, by using HarperDB, our server actions can now become full, like fully interactive with the database data. And that can be leveraged to build an extremely performant application because uh, pages built at build time will mean that when a user hits this site live, it'll run faster than it has before. To demonstrate a little bit more, we have we do have the npm run start command, and this will kind of do a, everything in production mode. So you'll see it's rebuilding the site in production mode. Um, you there is a pre-built option you can use to say that like we've already built the code, but there's no harm in doing this. And now HarperDB is running again. We can go back over here to dogs you know, to our to our app, and we can go back to the home page, we can go back to you know, the, the oh, dogs zero. And you can see that things are loading extremely quickly. So if we refresh this, you'll see that this actually is a cache hit um, for this page because nothing has changed. Um, but it's just an all around really great uh, developer experience. Um, beyond that, there's not much more to share, just that this is, is it really doesn't deviate too much from Next.js as a whole. Um, our example is not currently hooked up with um, like the npm lint command, but like it does, or the, the next lint, but you can set that up and things will work just fine. Um, last but not least, I will mention, if you are trying this for yourself, um, I already have this set up on my machine, but uh, other folks might not. You need to, your this code relies on the HarperDB package. And as we said, you have to import that here. So if you're doing so on a machine that are, that is that already has HarperDB installed somewhere else, like it should be, um, like it's installed globally, you may want to run npm link HarperDB from the from the root of your application, just so that it leverages the uh, the correct HarperDB instance um, on your machine. Uh, that pretty much concludes this uh, this uh, walkthrough video. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.